Hey guys, it's Apollo back. Welcome to Stargirl episode 10. We're 10 episodes in. And for those of you who are not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It's a new channel. We've been going for about a month now. And I want to thank you all for those who have subscribed already. Lots to talk about in this episode. So let's get to it. Now this episode is Brainwave Part 2. And I think that this was a fitting episode. It's probably actually my favourite episode of the season so far. And the reason for that is when I talked about Shiv and Shiv Part 2, it didn't really involve that much of Cindy. So it makes you kind of really cringe and you thought to yourself, are they going to do the same thing here? But no, they don't really do that. They really focus this story on Henry Jr. And I have to say, looking at what they've done with Beth and looking at what they've done with Rick Tyler this guy Henry Jr. has had more character development in this first season than any of those two and it's a real shame because those two are on the team with Courtney and you'd expect for their backstories to have some kind of emotion and, and trigger for the passion for the fans and it doesn't really kind of hit off yes we know he's on a revenge tip and Beth well Beth's just looking to find some friends because her parents are getting bored of her and she's obviously found her feet with the team. What we're getting here is a real deep look into Henry Jr. and Henry Sr.'s backstory. We now understand what's made each of them the person that they are. We know how Henry Sr. was driven by his father's treatment to become a better person, more confident, and his power is just way, 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 way OP. All the members think that he is the most powerful one on the show. So for him to awaken, it's just, it's on now. The gloves are off. It's on. After Henry Sr. woke up, Henry Jr. heard his dad's thoughts about his wife Mary and her death. And he went home and watched another video where he learned that not only was she a superhero, but her brother was actually Starman. Okay, F Starman is Courtney's father. F. That means that Courtney and Henry Jr. are cousins. And it's really weird because when Courtney catches up with Henry later on after she learns that, she runs up to hug him thinking, yeah, you know, we're cousins, we're cousins. That bond and that goodness that the team have been talking to Henry Jr. about is what kind of made him help the team. He agreed to help Beth, Yolanda and Rick to infiltrate the tunnels to rescue his dad. What they didn't know at the time was that his dad, under the guidance of the Dragon King, was turned. So... For those of you who remember the end of the last episode, he woke up from that and he had amnesia. He couldn't remember the last 10 years and he was almost back to the, the, the loving parent. The one scene that we see there is when he actually hugs Henry Jr. Now, Henry Jr., remember, has had no love. The parents have been strict. His father's not shown him anything, anything but remorse, yeah? And in this episode, we actually see that gone. His father's woken up now and he tries to embrace him. They actually hug each other. But then when Henry, Henry Sr. gets his memories back from the Dragon King, he's just not having it. He's turned back into the vile, disgusting, malicious enemy that we know as Brainwave. But this show also starts prior, two years prior to the events, where Pat and Barbara are seen having their first dinner date. And it's a really good sort of mix. They both kind of order banana splits and there's only one left. But after that, we kind of see how they met and... I, can't, I kind of think this is throwing us back, showing us that Pat really isn't Courtney's father and that Pat just met her organically and that's how it worked out. If him meeting Barbara and then her daughter Courtney, who happens to be a wielder of the new staff, is just a coincidence. And I think that that's why it was taking us back so we could see that happen. Pat still goes to find Barbara because obviously Barbara's pissed right now. We left the last episode where the cosmic staff, she saw it in Courtney's hand and they got some explaining to do. So when Pat goes to find Barbara, Courtney in the JSA, he basically has a conversation with Barbara explaining that he didn't mean everything and he tried to tell her but it just was never the right time. And Barbara obviously finds out that this is what they've been doing behind their back. And I think the trigger for Barbara, which made, which pulled her over the edge, was when she said, hold on, the car crash last week, that wasn't really a car crash, was it? That was you fighting crime, putting my daughter's life at risk. Then she was completely pissed. And that's when she said, you know, leave, leave the house. 
So that would, that really didn't drop was as well as we thought it would drop. But I did warn before that this would happen if she found out. So it's kind of something that we really expected. But back on to what the main thing was for this episode, Henry Jr. Now, despite his negative and aggressive traits, he's capable of some real emotion. And we see that in this episode. Father fell into a coma. He again showed passion and emotion. And even when Cindy was trying to say, you know, why don't you come out with me? Forget your father. He was like, are you kidding me? My father is in a coma. Go away. You know, he was just like, how dare you talk to me about going out and having fun when my father was in a coma. One thing we got to realize, I'm going to draw the line here because I always like talking about the comics. But Henry Jr. in the comics, he was under the influences of Infinity Incorporated under the alias of Brainway Jr. So he decided to be good. And it wasn't until his powers drove him insane that turned him into a villain. So in the comics, he was this very complex character that could kind of swing either way. And we that that's why we're seeing this. We're seeing all the triggers happen. And I thought last week's episode was a really good setup for that. And we're seeing all these things trigger now that we know that Henry is able to read everybody's thoughts. You know, I remember when Henry said to Courtney, when he, he said to her, you know what it's like to be able to read everybody's thoughts? It's hell on earth. You think I'm a jerk? But trust me, everybody is worse. And it's just showing the ugly, greedy, hateful, twisted side. And that's what he said to her. He said, people are monsters. And that's the truth. But when I talked about last week's review, and I said, when Yolanda said, I trusted you and I loved you, that made him feel like he was a villain too. So part of his redemption has got to do with him seeing the dark side of him and wanted to come to the light but his powers even though he's very powerful the lack of his experience using his powers and making him vulnerable because we know his power makes him unstable we know it causes him pain and headaches and things like that so it's one of those things that you just can't sort of feel that against his father he wouldn't fare well in a fight and unfortunately that's what basically happens so with with that being said, uh, they stumble across the Dragon's King's lair, and this is where this really sets off. You know, Stargirl, Wildcat, Henry Jr., they go at it against the Dragon King, and they're able to defeat him and his drones before locating Brainwave. But by that time, he's already been cured of the amnesia. And then when the team tries to escape, he corners them. And guys, I was absolutely losing it at this point. When Henry tried to talk to his father into abandoning Jordan yeah but Brainwave reveals at that point that it was actually him that killed Mary not Jordan and this is where we see everything turn for the worse and guys I'm not lying Henry Jr actually tries to mentally save the rest of the team by pushing them beyond the bars you know opening the bars when our man was opening them and Henry Sr. tried to close them so they couldn't escape. It was Henry Jr. that forced the bars back open, got those kids out, the rest of his team, and then tried to take on his father himself, and it did not go well. As I said, inexperience and all the headaches means that he just could not get the best of his powers. And Jordan, uh, Jordan would have enjoyed this because Jordan's killed just about everybody but his own family. You know, we've seen, we've seen Jordan kill so many people. The wizard, the wizard's wife, the wizard's son. We've seen him kill so many people. And seeing Brainwave actually kill his son, Henry Jr., was just, it was horror. It was just absolute. And the team was fighting to get back on the other side. They were slashing and breaking and doing everything with the bars. But Brainwave was so powerful. Not only was he fighting his son and controlling all the rocks falling down but he was putting force fields on the bars so that the jsa team the kids couldn't break the bars to save henry it was so heartbreaking guys to see it and i tell you this was such an amazing stunning episode uh, seriously i have to give this one a straight nine i have to give this one a straight nine let's talk about something different let's talk about the father of courtney now Courtney, the one thing I've got to say about Courtney, it shows her carelessness. She's really careless with her secret identity. And I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the comics, because I know some of you out there don't actually read the comics. But in the comics, she too is careless with her secret identity. And many of her school friends, and, and actually some of the villains, are already aware of her identity. But the one thing that you guys don't see in the comics, and the difference with the TV show is... You've seen Stargirl fight. There was an instance in this episode where they go down to Dragon King's lair 
and she doesn't have the cosmic staff yeah the staff is was, was captured by brainwave telepathically and it was frozen on ice by icicle so she doesn't have the staff so she goes into the layer and she takes a spear from the wall and she's kicking ass with it she's kicking butt everyone's like hey this girl don't even need a damn cosmic staff well in theory she does but i'll explain that in a minute so innately guys she is a gymnast and she does kickboxing that's what she does in the comics they haven't really sold that here in the tv show and i think that that kind of goes against her because it makes her look like a mary sue yeah it makes her look like all of a sudden she got this stuff and she can do backflips and, and everything else and punch and kick and all this stuff but in the tv show they don't really explain that she can actually fight she has done kickboxing and she is a high level gymnast yeah they don't really show that at all in the tv show and it's a little confusing because when you see her without the stuff and she's doing all these amazing moves and kicks and punches you're thinking hold on a second who mary sued this girl up and that's not exactly the case but in the comics it's slightly different because you know it's not really the staff it's a cosmic belt yeah it's like a cosmic belt and with courtney what she can really do with this is she has enhanced strength enhanced speed agility and stamina as well as the ability to shoot projectiles but they don't again they don't really explain this to you in a tv show and they don't explain why the staff is sentient again i talked about this before and i said in the comics the staff isn't sentient that's just something that's been added to the tv show and it's something like it is what makes the tv show fun because i compared it to skeet booster gold and i compared it to blue beetle as well yeah the scarab I, I i compared it to a relationship between parasite or alien and the superhero and that makes for fun narrative with the hero and i think that that's the reason why this show is surprising a lot of people because they've taken things jeff john's obviously taken things what works with other heroes and he's blended them into this tv show and i tell you now i've read the comic of star girl but the tv show is way better because it's just these different things that come together and makes her a really, really good superhero. And she's still raw. She still doesn't understand how to work in terms of teamwork. But, you know, the best is yet to come. Remember, guys, just approaching to the end of season one. And we're not even into season two yet. These guys are underpowered. Our heroes are, are not that strong. And they don't know how to use their abilities. So there's a plenty of room to grow. There's plenty of room to grow. But guys, looking at the trailers for next week, we're going to get a rude awakening. Sam Curtis is her biological father. And not just her father, but rather than a hero, he was a criminal in the comics. He's the one that joined up with the Royal Flush Gang. And this guy's a scum, he's a con man. He's never, he's not even, he's a complete opposite to Starman. And I think that that is going to be apparent in the show, that he is not um, going to be Starman. And Starman isn't going to be her father. The staff works with her. And it, remember, the staff lay dormant for 10 years. After Starman died, it was in a box for 10 years before Courtney got it. So I think what we're seeing here is a, is a couple of things. Yeah, Ted Knight, the original Starman, he's the one that, had, that, that created the staff. Staff is made from cosmic energy. It draws its power from the cosmos, yeah? And that's the reason why the staff is what it is. So I, I think that, that it's a possibility that Ted Knight could be related to her. If not, guys, then we're going to have to go with the fact that, like a Green Lantern's ring, it chooses somebody who is worthy. And that's the only way how we're going to get answers from this thing, because in that respect, that's probably what we're going to see out of this. But uh, I can't believe that Henry Jr. is dead. I can't believe it. It's, it's heartbreaking. And he, he succumbed to his powers, which made him addictive. It made him power hungry. It, made, it started to turn him evil. And when we saw, you know, he struggled to understand and control his abilities. There's a lot of pain, a lot of curiosity. When he was watching those videotapes, he wanted to know what was going on. But when his telepathic powers expanded, he could literally read minds when he was in the exam at school. He could start to do different things and communicate with his father. He communicated with Courtney and Yolanda. And he started to begin to see that people aren't as horrific as he thought they was. And that's why he started to turn good. And 
he had showed a much kinder side and a much more humble side to his personality and he was willing to kind of seek justice yeah you know he had these powers which his father used for bad and it's almost as if he wanted to, to, to seek justice for his powers by turning good but Henry apologized to Yolanda showing he was truly remorseful for his actions and that he, he had learned from his past and by the time he died guys Henry had evolved into someone who we could call a hero he he changed he he his character has just had a, an amazing redemption arc who people would now believe he's good all those kids on the JSA believe that Henry is good and if anything we're left with is the fact that if he does come back yeah and I'll talk about that next if he does come back then he'll be somebody that will be a force to be reckoned with once he starts to control his powers and how can they bring him back well there's two things the first thing is is that Brainwave Senior didn't want to kill his his own son that he kind of levitated them off to make it look like he crushed them but in fact they were hovering above him that's my first theory my second theory is it could actually be Henry Jr. himself that has put a protective shield over his body to make himself not be crushed by the rocks so there's different ways that they can go with this we just don't know what they're going to do yet I heard a lot of people talking about Dragon King can turn people into zombies and bring them back to life and all that guys that ain't going to work for me I wouldn't want to see a Henry a zombified Henry come back any more than I want to see a zombified Cindy who, whose father can't control her yeah I don't want to see all of that and just an amazing episode I love this episode so much and as I said the good thing about this episode for me also turned into a bad thing if you can bring Henry Jr that kind of development that kind of growth that kind of redemption arc what the hell are you doing with Rick Tyler <laughs> what you know I can deal with Beth I'm not really worried about Beth because Beth isn't on a revenge tip so I think we can leave Beth out of this and we'll hope that Beth can grow into the show organically yeah I, and, and I talked about her already I said I don't want the glasses the goggles to do everything for her I want her to have the ability to take what the glasses tells her and use her own intellect to put two and two together because remember guys the glasses only knows what the JSA database knows so if it, there's, there's things that happen in that it doesn't know because it's only accumulated information from when the JSA was active. Well, they ain't been active for the last 10 years. So there's a lot that the goggles don't actually know. And, I, and what I want to see is I want to, to, to see her use her intelligence to bridge the gap in that kind of narrative for her. But Rick Tyler, Rick is the one that I want to see empowered on this show. Yeah, I done talk about him already and I said, that I'd like to see, he's got his father's journal and I would like to see him take studying at school more seriously and get into the medicines and get into the drugs that made his father, Rex Tyler, make the Our Man formula. Because remember guys, Rex put a limit on it 60 minutes per day so that he wouldn't abuse the power. In the comics, if he use, there is a way how he can use more of the drug and instead of an hour, it would be half an hour, but it makes him more powerful it just uses it less so I don't know whether they're gonna do any of that stuff and show different levels of where you can take it I definitely want to see more and you know you can't embarrass us and show us what you've done with Henry Jr a villain and then the hero gets no love so listen let's hope that they turn that around so that's it from me guys cannot wait for the next episode we've seen the trailers and Courtney's real biological father comes to town and he's a scumbag so i'm not exactly hoping anything's going to happen seriously in that show other than courtney seeing how dishonorable he is as a father and how the guy's been missing for 10 years at the same time as starman is anybody's guess but look let's see how it works out thanks for supporting the channel guys please put a like to this video appreciate all the love and i'll speak to you guys in the next one peace